peace be with you. Welcome to another collective worship. Let's get ready for a time of reflection and I'll light the virtual candle. So if you're ready, I've got a story to share with you. A story about someone who wanted to use their power and authority to make sure that they got their own way. And they didn't really care what happened to the people who got hurt. So let me introduce you to Naboth. Now Naboth, he owned a vineyard. He loved being in his vineyard, watching the grapes grow, pruning the grapevines. And one day he hoped that his children would enjoy his vineyard as much as he did. But this is King Ahab. Now, you might be able to tell from his face, he was a bit cross and grumpy. And he didn't really care about other people at all. And one day, he looked out from the tallest tower of his palace and looked down and he noticed down there a little bit of land with some grapevines growing on it. You've guessed it, Naboth's vineyard. And King Ahab thought to himself, hmm, that's right next to my palace. That would be really convenient. So I could grow ooh, vegetables in it. That would be good. I think I want that vineyard all for myself. So he hurried down and went to find Naboth in the vineyard. Sell me your vineyard straight away. I want it for myself. Now, Naboth had heard about King Ahab and his temper and how horrible he could be. So he sort of cringed and said, I'm really sorry, but this vineyard is my inheritance from God and I'm going to pass it on to my children when they're old enough to look after the vines. I can't sell it to you. <sighs> King Ahab was really furious. He stomped off and clenched his fists and screwed up his face because he was so cross and then he flopped into his bed and just like a little two-year-old child, he had a sulk. Now this is Queen Jezebel. Now, you might not be able to tell from that smile, but she wasn't very nice either. She was scheming and didn't care who got hurt in her schemes. She had heard King Ahab stomping about the palace and flopping in the bed, heard that he was sulking and wouldn't eat his dinner. So she came up to see what was wrong. He said, I want that vineyard that belongs to Naboth. He's right by my palace. It would be really convenient to grow my vegetables in. I want it. Queen Jezebel just smiled one of her crafty, sneaky smiles said, don't get your knickers in the twist. I'll sort it out. So she had a plan, a sneaky, cunning plan. She wrote some letters pretending to be King Ahab. She even put his official sign on the letters. And then she went round and gave them to the officials across the whole country. The letter said, I want you to declare a special day of fasting and put Naboth in the seat of honour. And then I want you to bring in some troublemakers to tell lies about Naboth. Well, the officials were very worried when they saw that. They knew that wasn't a good thing to do. 
but they also knew about Queen Jezebel and her schemes and King Ahab and his bad behaviour and they were really scared. They didn't want to stand up to them at all. So they did what was said in the letters. They declared a day and put Naboth in the seat of honour and then brought two troublemakers in to tell lies about Naboth. They made up all sorts of stories about Naboth and that got all the people at the special day so cross that they believed the lies that had been told about Naboth and they threw rocks and stones at him. Now Jezebel was delighted. She heard that Naboth had been killed and ran to see King Ahab. The vineyard's yours, she said. Naboth is dead. You can take the vineyard and you don't even have to pay for it now. She was delighted. And King Ahab went back up to the top of his tall tower and looked down and thought, hmm, I do like the look of my new vegetable garden. Now then, this is someone else in our story. His name is Elijah. And Elijah listened very carefully to God. And God said, go and see King Ahab. So Elijah went off and found King Ahab in his new garden in what was Naboth's vineyard. King Ahab was delighted with the way things had worked out. He'd got his own way. But Elijah said, God has been watching you. He's seen what you and Queen Jezebel and your family have been doing. He's seen how badly you've behaved. Mm. King Ahab was furious. You're always giving me bad news. You're always telling me what I can't do. You're just causing trouble. But Elijah wasn't afraid of King Ahab. Elijah knew that God was on his side. And Elijah said, God's been watching you and he's going to punish you and your family for what you've done. Ahab was worried now. Just like many bullies, he didn't want to stand up to someone more powerful than him. He was very scared. And then he began to think about Naboth and Naboth's family and what had happened to them, all because he had wanted his own way and wanted the vineyard. And then King Ahab began to feel very sorry for what he'd done. He tore his royal robes and he refused to eat to show how sorry he was. And so God saw this too. God saw that Ahab was sorry for what he'd done and he gave Elijah another message. Go and tell King Ahab that the punishment won't come in his lifetime because I've seen that he's sorry. So you can find that story in the Old Testament of the Bible. That's the first half before Jesus. And it's in a book called One Kings, the first book about all the kings. And it's chapter 21, if you want to read it yourself. In the story, King Ahab and Queen Jezebel were really unkind. They weren't very nice at all. In fact, I think they were fairly horrid. And today, we still come across people who are unkind and mean. And it can really hurt and can be really uncomfortable. 
if you are being on the receiving end of that or being asked to do something that you don't feel comfortable with. But just like Elijah, we can also be courageous. Christians today believe that God is with us today and will help us. So if someone is being unkind and bullying you, tell someone about it. Tell a teacher or a grown up or one, your mom or your dad. Tell someone about it. And if you see it happening to someone else, then tell someone and they can help it to stop. But don't suffer on your own. Know that God is with you and God will give you the courage to tell a grown up or to tell a teacher and to get some help. So I'm going to finish the collective worship with a short prayer. If you're not sure about prayer and don't want it to be a prayer, then that's OK. You can just use the words to think about. But if you would like it to be a prayer, you can say Amen at the end. Lord God, when we see someone being mean or unkind to others, give us courage like Elijah had courage and help us to tell the right person who can help. When we are being forced to do something that we don't want to do that we know is wrong, make us strong. Like Elijah, may we know that you are with us and show us the right person to tell who can help it stop. And if someone is being unkind to us, may we know just like Elijah that you are with us and show us the people who can help and help us to be kind and caring and help us to look after each other. And we thank you for the teachers, for mums and dads and aunties and uncles who will help us and look after us. Amen. Thank you for listening. Goodbye.